What's going on everybody? Welcome back to ICW Drive Session and we are back at it again. We are trying to stay true to this whole vlogging situation. So today we are back out in the vet and it's not the best of days, but we're going to make it work. So what do you guys want to talk about today? Well, actually, I have an interesting topic I think I want to share with you. So Let's go ahead, quiet Zeus down a little bit. And I'm gonna get into an interesting topic with you today. I'm gonna get into a topic that was asked to me actually around Veterans Day when I made a comment that I don't really take advantage of all the veteran opportunities or meals and deals and things of that nature on Veterans Day. I was asked, do I not like being a veteran and honestly, that's not the problem. My concern or issue is that theoretically, I just don't look at it as I'm in that much of a need. So I let others enjoy the day and I don't try to head out and take advantage of all the deals, but that's just me. But it opens up the door for another topic is why did I go into the military and do I like being a veteran? Let's go. So if you haven't figured it out by now, we are back in Zeus, which is one of my favorite places to be. And I'm gonna dive right into this topic. Now, part of the reason why this conversation even came up was because I didn't jump down where I made a comment about not really taking advantage of all the free meals and things you can do on Veterans Day if you're a veteran. And so someone asked me, was I actually ashamed of being a veteran or did I feel like I made a bad decision? Like what was the real source behind my thoughts and actions? And I'll quietly be honest with you. When it really comes down to it, I really decided not to take advantage of many of the veteran opportunities only because I feel like at some point, especially for the day, I'm not in that much of need. I do appreciate the recognition and appreciation that many of these companies give. But I also see a lot of Vietnam veterans, older veterans than me, that are sitting there waiting for the opportunity to enjoy a meal and things of that nature. And honestly, I like getting out and hearing their stories and talking to them for a moment. But to be sitting down waiting an hour plus just to get a free meal isn't something I feel is a necessity of something I have to partake in. So I really don't do it. It's nothing against me not appreciate being a veteran or having a difference of opinion about being a veteran. It's just one of those decisions I made whereas I feel like the most valuable thing in life is time. And I appreciate somebody saying thank you for their service when they see me and maybe let me buy you a cup of coffee or this, that, and the other, which I did receive in the past when I was younger. I appreciate that more than I actually do trying to go out and because today is a day designated to show appreciation, giving up my time to be recognized that way. We all have our opinions, and I know I can touch the bases on that and say, like, you know, truthfully, I feel like more of uh, a lot of these 
places are doing it not out of the, the pureness of their heart, but because you don't want to get frowned upon by many other locations or people and so forth if you don't do something. But that's a whole nother topic. Let me run in here. Come on, it's not the best day, y'all. We got rain. We got rain and other shenanigans. I know, I know. People don't even know. And they probably won't do it after this, but most of the time I don't like Zeus. I don't turn them off. I just let them be what they're going to be. Most, at least in my neighborhood, my area, I'm not really concerned about nobody hopping them and snatching them. So, and watch the day be the day. <laughs> but anyway, Swole, shout out to you. Keep that thing on you. Walking to Starbucks to grab my coffee. So let's continue on with the conversation and dive back into the real topic. So why did I go into the military? For those that know me know it was really a choice, I would say made to prove a point, but you really don't know the backstory behind it. up in the military because my father served in the military but he didn't actually serve out of uh how can i say volunteering he was actually drafted but when we talk about life and things of that nature one of the things he sits there and tells me all the time is that being in the military helped him grow up and made him who he, the man he is today some people say he's too hard. I think it's just more of a fact that he's from a different era and men were taught to be tough and internalize more. And I love my father, so you know, shout out to dad. I know he watches my videos and he has times. Um, so I also remember there was a point he kind of questioned my toughness. So when it came time for me to make a decision in my transition period, from college where I just felt like I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, literally, I was hit, I'm not gonna say with the alternative, but with the reminder that, you know, as long as I was in school or doing something, he would support me, but he's not gonna support a grown man just sitting at home who's feeling lost. So I need to figure something out with my life and make some decisions to move forward. And I have to respect that. Because if he wouldn't have put that fire up under me, I'm not sure what I would have did. So my thoughts drifted back to the fact whereas I felt like I felt like I need to do something. And a lot of times when you're lost, and I'm not going to say lost, but a lot of times I feel like when I sit idle, or maybe that's a better choice of words. When you're sitting idle and you don't know what to do, sometimes the best thing you can do is volunteer your service. It helps put life in perspective and, and often gives you clarity when you don't have it. So I actually went out and volunteered because all this was happening around the holiday time. So I actually went out and volunteered. I can't remember the exact location, but I did help volunteer feed the homeless. It was around Christmas time and somewhere in the midst of that, I think I might have saw or spoke with a gentleman that was a Vietnam War veteran that was living on the streets. And it just made me remember what people have sacrificed for us. And so 
I think in that moment, partially because I was not 100% sure about my next move, it made me feel like I haven't done enough. I haven't given enough. And I started to think about the sacrifices my father has made to help produce a lifestyle that I, I became accomplished with. And I never felt like we were poor. And I never felt like I went without. And so I looked at all his sacrifices. And then I remember we had family members that were veterans, friends to the family that were veterans. And I don't know, I just got caught up in that moment. And it's not a bad moment to get caught up in. So I decided to join the military. It just seemed like the right decision to make. Was it a spontaneous and spur of the moment decision made? Probably so. But nonetheless, I made that decision and I never looked back. Now, many people don't know that the first branch I went to was the Marines. And I'll be honest with you, I took the ASVAB for the Marines. I scored off the charts, even to the point where the Marine recruiter was like, you sure you want to join the Marines? And I was like, yeah, I feel like I'm looking for a few good men. And I felt like I was one of those good men that they should be looking for. Commercials get you every time. So with that being said, I went to the Marines. Everything seemed right, ready to go. And then I got into a conversation with somebody and the Marines were moving slow with the, I'm not gonna lie to you. I went to school to be an accountant, man. So it's always, it gotta make sense, especially when it comes to the dollars. And the Marines were moving slow because like I said, I was lost, I needed a decision to make. And they tried to put me off until an enlistment date eight, nine months out. So my thought process was if I figure it out over the next eight to nine months, I don't need the Marines. Don't forget to sign up if you're in the Chicagoland area for the ICMB Drivers Edition bowling event, as we call it switching lanes, going from your car to the bowling lanes to have some fun. I guess in January, which is usually one of the, typically one of the coldest months of the year. So if you want to get out, have some fun, hang out with me, a couple other, you know, people from the crew, bowl, talk, joke, talk about cars, whatever. We're having a bowling event called the ICMV Drivers Edition Switching Lane Bowling Event. You can check it out on our website, www.icmvde.com. Sign up, come out, have some fun. We're going to have some prizes, games, raffles. We're doing a lot. We're going to make this a good time. So after sitting still for like two weeks, I walked into the Navy and the Air Force recruit office. And they probably did something they should have never did. But this is how crazy it was because like I said, I was looking at the Marines. So at that point in time, I went to visit my girlfriend and she's away at college. And technically I was a year older than her, so she still was at school. I went to visit her and I went down there into a small town. She was at the University of Illinois in Champaign, um, Urbana. And I'll just be real with you. We kind of got into an argument after me being there maybe seven, eight days. And I just felt like it was time for me to go. So when she went to class, I went to the recruiting office because this nine month window that I was sitting in or was supposedly, I would say in the queue, just didn't seem like a good fit for me and what was going on in my life. So I went there and I kind of told them what was taking place. I had went to the, the uh, I want to say I had went to the Marines did the ASVAB, yada, 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 and they had me sitting out for nine months. Well, at this point in time, although they had their own different rooms and so forth, the Air Force and the Navy recruiter were sitting together. Now, the Navy recruiter, because I had said 
I already done things with the Marines, really didn't entertain the fact that I was looking to possibly enroll into the Navy, or should I say, listen to the Navy. So they really didn't shoot their shot or give their pitch. The Air Force recruit, on the other hand, sat there and answered more questions, and they were sitting together, answered more questions, gave me more options, told me what I could do, yada, 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 and so forth. So in the end, So came back and started talking numbers. He started speaking the listening bonus. Now, the Marines mentioned something about maybe five thousand dollars, and I was like, okay. It was an afterthought. I went to the Air Force, and we started talking about jobs and things of that nature. And I always had a belief or interest in being a crew chief because when I worked in the airport when I was younger, I worked on the flight line, and the crew chiefs made good money they came out and did what I thought was respectable work and they were like the rock stars of the ground crew so they mentioned possibly becoming a crew chief and with the crew chief there was a sign on bonus of twelve thousand dollars now that was very intriguing because you do the math that's seven thousand more than the Marines. And all of the 7,000 more than the Marines, they also had another option that if you went in open, and most of you know that means you haven't really choose the background, but if you went open enlisted, or open mechanical. So if you went in open mechanical, at this point in time, they were paying $19,000 for the bonus. So we looked at how the system was playing out and my recruiter almost 100% guaranteed me that if I went in, which became shortened the distance from a nine month window to a seven week window, that if I went in on this window, and if I had, I had to get through boot camp with no delays, setbacks, and so forth, and I was in very good physical shape, that when I came out at this time, I would be thrown into one of three crew chief options, which I really want to be an F-15 crew chief, but you say you need to be F-15, F-16, or A-10. And so if I would have chose F-15 direct, it was an 11,000 bonus. If I chose F-16 direct, it was a 13,000 bonus. If I chose a, a 18 direct, it was a $9,000 bonus. So going in open was the best option to maximize my dollars. And as long as I didn't mess up my chances in boot camp, I would have got one of those three. Well, I went in open, took care of business in the boot camp, and I ended up an F-16 crew chief with a $19,000 bonus. So yes, I ended up in the military based off not knowing my next move in life once I got done with college. And it worked out for me in so many ways. I made lifelong friends. I got a good bonus for enlisting. I grew up pretty much, learned how to live on my own, was given the responsibilities of having a house and I can sit there and say my military experience was amazing. I did not have any regrets from it. And if I had to do it all over again, I would. So to answer your question, I end up in the military because my father gave me a choice. Or I guess you can say, Valen told me I need to figure out my life and do something. And I did. I chose to become a veteran but the one thing I chose not to do and I guess it was because he kind of gave me the choice was not to go in the army because that's what he was in and he got enlisted he didn't have that option so I wanted the option he never really complained about it but 
that's a whole nother story. So just, just stick to the strip of this one. That's how I end up in the military. I love my military service. So many, you know, great memories. And if you want to talk about that, put the comments below. I'll address the questions maybe at another date. Like I said, we're supposed to be vlogging for the next 30 days. I'm going to try to keep this up. Shout out to my boy Jap Euro, Slow 55, Catfish, and so on. You know, guys, you know who you are. Um, I, I accepted the challenge, and this is what you're getting right now. So this is another behind the scenes, I guess you can say, one of those moments answering questions. But ICMV Driver Session. Go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, join the ICMV Driver Session community. We are an interactive community, so if you ask me questions, I typically answer them just like this was asked by somebody I met in person. And I think it was an interesting topic. Let me, let me know what you think below. But as always, build your dreams, chase your visions. Don't let anybody discourage you. It's okay to be unique. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed. And I will see you in these streets. Peace.